These are the scariest things about living on a boat. Get the boat off of the reef! We are in distress. This is so scary. Hold on! Oh, shoot. Hello? Maybe something's in there! Hold on! Oh my god! Okay. I'm speechless right now. I have no idea how to even explain what just happened. Living on the water opens up a whole new world of risk, fears, and uncertainties. We like to think of it as high risk versus high reward. We left our careers and sold our house to pursue a life on the water. We're now 7,000 nautical miles into our mission to sail the world. And while we'd never describe this lifestyle as easy, it's the most fulfilling thing we've ever done. In this video, we're sharing our scariest moments in our first year of cruising, and hopefully you'll learn from our experiences and our mistakes. Just after buying the boat, we had our first scary moment. Columbia, Tennessee native, her dream to live on a boat is starting off pretty rocky. We bought our dream boat in 2022, and we sailed her a thousand nautical miles across the Gulf of Mexico to our home base in Sarasota, Florida. Now our plan was to wait out hurricane season at the dock, but Man, were we naive in thinking that a hurricane wouldn't actually come. Hurricane Ian gaining in strength, taking direct aim at Florida. We've kind of been back and forth a lot uh, on what exactly we're going to do for the storm. Yesterday morning, we debated going to Miami. The final decision has been made. We are going to another marina. And with this low pressure hurricane coming, it is a counterclockwise spin. So we're expecting, based on the spin of the storm, to have all of our winds coming from a south-southeast direction. This is uh, the calm before the storm. We're almost done with the boat prep. She'll get through this one. Oh yeah, she will. We'll still have a boat, just whether or not it's in pieces. Three days of preparing and here we are. It's about 6.30 on Tuesday night. This is what a hurricane prep boat looks like. So sunshade here, cushions, more cushions up under there, mainsail here, and then more sunshade, the grills under there. Yeah. We're jam-packed in here. We are getting ready to leave Adventure Cruise here, tied up at the dock. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 lines. US 301 right now, a main road that runs through Manatee County, and we are headed to the boat. All right, so we just got on the boat. It's still super, super blowy. Um, freezing outside. Freezing outside. Um, but initial view is that everything is good, at least on the outside. The only thing we found so far is a minor leak in the forward-facing starboard bathroom, which is basically our bathroom. Um, very minor, and then one of the solar panels is a little loose on one side, so we just put a ratchet strap on it, feeling much better about that. The boat was actually pretty much sitting on the bottom. Because um, the water's gone out. Yeah, all the water's been pushed out, so it felt like there was, I could feel, every once in a while I could feel us just touch bottom. I didn't leave enough slack in that line, so there was a lot of pressure on that line to the cleat and I couldn't undo it, so I ended up cutting that line. There's a lot of lessons to be learned when it comes to hurricanes, and quite frankly, we learned a lot in this one. The biggest one was the Gulf of Mexico, for us as a sailboat, only being able to move eight knots can trap you. 72 hours before this hurricane made landfall, we actually debated taking the boat to Fort Myers. All of the predictions said it was coming to Tampa Bay. 12 hours before making landfall, the hurricane made a right-hand turn right into Fort Myers. Had we done that, we wouldn't have a boat today. So it really makes it hard for me to ever want to take this sailboat back to the Gulf of Mexico. 
The day after the hurricane, we drove down to Fort Myers to help out with hurricane relief however we could. Oh my gosh. Honestly, we felt a little guilty that our lives would continue as normal while so many others lost everything. We waited until the end of hurricane season in November and then we left the dock. It is now 4 a.m. and we're leaving the dock and not coming back. That early morning was tense and full of so many emotions as we were leaving the comfort and security of the dock to venture out into the great unknown. The first leg of our journey was to Key West. Still to this day, this was one of the worst passages we've ever had. This is a result of a rough crossing. I was sick as a dog and contemplated my life's decisions many times over that night. Unfortunately, there's not much footage to show for it, but over the next month, we rounded the Florida Keys and stopped in Fort Lauderdale. While we were there, we noticed another boat that was dragging anchor. Oh, sh By the time we got there, the damage was already done. All right, um, is there anyone? Knock on the boat. Let's just see if there's anyone there. Knock on the hole. Hello? Is anyone here? No one was on board. All right, there we go, we got some separation. We did everything we could to push the catamaran off the monohull to create some space between the boats. Uh, there is, there's a lot of scuff, yeah, there was damage to the front. We called the people who own this boat. Our friend's boat is right here, so we're calling them next because it is apparent that this uh, monohull's anchor is dragging, and then we're right behind here, so um, it keeps on this track. It could just dry, drag right down the channel. Cool is now getting the fenders on this boat. Thankfully, the owner of the catamaran wasn't too far away. You know, the lesson here is when you're in a tight anchorage, especially one where you're gonna move 180 degrees with the tides, make sure to share your contacts with your neighbors. If you're gonna be away from your boat any given time, and if they're leaving, they should share their contact with you. We crossed over to the Bahamas and spent the next few absolutely blissful months soaking up everything this paradise has to offer. This is the high reward part we talk about. We spent our days sailing, spearfishing, and meeting the people of this island nation. As we were leaving Cat Island, I noticed tuna erupting on a bait ball in front of us, so I rushed to get the fishing lines out. Look at the birds! About the time I got the lines out, we made impact. Baby, 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 something's in there. Hold on. Oh my gosh, it's a whale shark. Oh, that's what we hit. Oh my goodness. There just so happened to be another animal feeding on this same bait ball. And it happened to be the size of our boat. Babe, he's opening his mouth. Have you seen any blood on him? No. I don't see any blood. He just, oh. he just raised up and opened his mouth. This is the catamaran. Do you guys need us to call anybody to help or you? Go check it out now and get back to us. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I don't know. Uh, we, we hit pretty hard. Um, and unfortunately, this whale shark does not seem like it's uh, it's doing okay. I mean, there's nothing you can do. I mean, nothing at all. Just figure out, keep going, make sure you're good. We're just that inflatable right here, float, uh, swimming by. I think we're okay. So if uh, if anything happens, I'll, I'll definitely uh, reach out more. Lesson learned. Don't ever drive through a bait ball. Many times bait are trying to hide underneath something. It may be as simple as weeds, a tree, or in this case, a whale shark. As we were getting ready to go, get in the water to check on the whale shark, it swam away, seemingly unharmed, after about 15 minutes. As summer approached, so did the thunder and lightning. And when you have a 70 foot tall lightning rod sticking up in the air, let me tell you, you start to respect lightning in a way that maybe you never have before. It's always scary because if lightning hit our mass, it could fry everything in the entire boat. And not to mention, we have a $50,000 lightning deductible for our insurance. So a lightning strike is never something we want to have. That's when we realized we had to get out of the Bahamas and out of the hurricane belt. So we made our way up the East Coast, but as we soon learned, the Atlantic during hurricane season can be really tricky to navigate. It's definitely been the worst nights we've ever had on the boat. We had a thousand miles to Nantucket to go and we were making great speed. 
We were doing 10 knots and the last thing I wanted to do was change up the sails. But we kept seeing that wind speed click a little bit higher, higher, higher. We got to 18 knots and we knew that that was maxing out our sail. We both looked at each other and said we probably should take the sail down. And it wasn't 30 seconds later, 30 knot gusts came through and pop. The sail sounded like a rifle, popping the clue right off. Good morning. It has been one hellacious night. All three of us, myself, Emily, and Dixie, have been wearing our life jackets all night. Definitely been the worst night we've ever had on the boat. Thankfully, we were able to get it fixed in Massachusetts, but it was a thousand dollar mistake that we weren't wanting to pay for. The lesson here is, if you think you need to take your sail down, it's probably best to go ahead and do it right then. The storms continued on our passage up the East Coast, and this by far is the scariest storm we've ever encountered while at sea. You see it right now? Oh! Turn us around, we just saw 50 knots on the wind instrument. I'm shaking right now. That microburst came out of nowhere. 53 knots of wind just went from 12 knots to 53 knots in the matter of seconds. I am, I can't believe we had our sails down. Oh my gosh. Guys, I don't know if we just captured how intense that was on camera. In fact, I, I don't think we did. But I can tell you right now, that is probably the scariest nope. storm that we've ever we've ever encountered. The only thing I could think to do was, as the wind's blowing in from the back of the boat, I just did my best to stop us and, and pivot and turn the boat, put the nose into the wind and let her eat. I mean, that's all you can do. While exploring the East Coast, we heard this frightening call on the radio. 34 foot white hull sailing vessel taking on water over. Vessel in distress, vessel in distress. This is sailing vessel Adventure Cruise Catamaran. We just left that mooring field uh, and have put our sails down, turned around, and we are motoring back uh, to uh, help in any way possible. We have you in sight. This is the United States Coast Guard Sector New York. Coast Guard Sector New York. The Coast Guard has received a report of a 34 foot white haul vessel with the name of Journey taking on water with zero one persons on board. We are en route now to a mayday. We just left where we anchored for the night and we heard a vessel put out a mayday call that he is taking on water in the mooring field and I hope he's okay. There's a Coast Guard vessel or police vessel about to cross us from our port side bow. That was Tobo U.S. Tobo that passed. Roger, I understand you all are seeing over. Yeah, and I'm looking at the water line, so we're okay here. U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Coast Guard, sailing vessel, adventure cruise is standing down. I believe this case comes down to routine maintenance. The guy in this particular case that called for Mayday had a broken through hole he was trying to fix. In doing so, he broke it off leading to a direct hole in his boat. 
Fast forward to 2024, we're now back in the Bahamas and the weather is to blame for this next scary moment. A Mayday call went out at 6.30 this morning from Honeymoon Harbor, which is just south of Bimney. The white boat is a local boat trying to pull the sailboat off the rocks. Vessel assisting sailboat in distress, do you copy? Oh my gosh, this guy in the dinghy, he's getting, he's, he's in the, he's gonna, he's gonna wreck his dinghy. What's he doing? Why are you doing Why this, dude? He's way up there. Vessel assisting sailboat in distress. Do you copy? My dinghy and its name is Coda. If you're trying to get a hold of that. Ten four. Yes, I see your husband on Coda. Uh, just trying to get a hold of the local vessel. So from what I just saw with the drone, uh, this is not looking like it's going to end very well. So we're on the east side, walking over the grass and rocks to the west side. Yeah, this is sharp rock. Very sharp rocks, oof. When we got there, I quickly noticed that the angle they were trying to pull from was not helping, so I jumped in the water to help. Here, I'm fighting against the waves and I get another line from the sailboat to the white boat. You know, this is always the stuff I had a really hard time with when I was in TV news. You know, you want to film this stuff because you want to show the story and you want to educate people, and that's what this story is all about, of educating people of the realities, but I feel like such a douchebag walking up with a camera being like, hey, can I help you? Unfortunately, the local captain made a mistake and the boat also ended up on the rocks. Captain, when, when he starts pulling on you and you move, make sure that you don't have this tied off. All right. <laughs> back up, back up, back up. It's on the center engine. Hold on. You got him off? Yeah. All right, it's on your center engine. Right. You're, hey, you're two on the outside are fine. Get, your, get the boat off of the reef. A third boat came to help, and he too ended up on the rocks. Hey, that's it, that's it. Just put it in reverse. What a morning. This is this is nuts. So one of the guys who was helping, his dinghy started floating away. So I just rode him out on the dinghy to get his dinghy. And then I ran back to the boat to get our mask because if Cole was helping get valuables off the sailboat, he lost his wedding ring. So this is just insane. That happens. Oh yeah. All right, we got another boat out here trying to help, so I'm gonna put my mask back on and go out here and swim them the line. All right, we finally got this boat off. This Excalibur monohull, brand new bottom job. It's honestly a beautiful boat, and these people were just so excited to get to the Bahamas. They're actually meeting up with a sailing group in Nassau and they anchored in the wrong spot. Went to sleep and their anchor pulled and they ended up getting blown onto the beach uh, before they could, I, I think they got the motors on, but just in time, we've invited everyone back to our boat. Um, and you know, this is one of those God things because just yesterday, Twig of Floats, another cruising family who has decided to give up the cruising lifestyle. They're going back to Fort Lauderdale to sell their boat. And they had a whole bunch of food on their boat and they said, hey, we're not taking this back home with us to Colorado. Do you guys want it? And they gave us a couple hundred dollars worth of food. And now we're gonna put that food to good use because these people have been, they've had the worst nightmare come alive at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. this morning. It's a little emotional. I've been uh, kind of in solving mode ever since we got here, just trying to figure out, okay, what can we do? And we've got the boats anchored to where it's not gonna be pushed up onto shore anymore. But there is another high tide coming that's gonna be a little bit higher than now uh, at midnight tonight. So we're gonna go back to our boat. We're gonna have everyone on the boat, give them a chance to relax. And then we're gonna all come back out here as a group and we're going to really reset their anchors and, and make sure that at that high tide, the boat doesn't get pushed further on the land. We later learned that the crew started to pull their anchor in the heavy seas and got disoriented. 
They ended up motoring towards the reef, and by the time they realized where they were, it was already too late. The lesson learned here is make sure to keep your instruments on when you have bad weather. You always need to be able to look down at your instruments and know exactly where you are. And if you ever find yourself aground, hurry and get your anchor out to deep water and put pressure to it so that you do not get pushed further and further onto shore. As if the experience in Bimini wasn't enough, we get to the Exumas not but a week later and have one of the most stressful hour and a half rescues that we and I have ever encountered. It was quite an eye-opening experience. It's about 4.30 in the morning. We just woke up to some rain and really heavy winds. We knew the winds were changing tonight and this anchorage where we are in the Exumas. Leaf key anchorage, leaf key anchorage. Does anyone have a dinghy in the water who could assist a monohull if possible? There is a monohull that was beside us that I guess they drug anchor, so they picked their anchor up and then they tried to drive out of this uh, cut area but there's rocks over there. And so we jumped out of bed and, and we've watched this all happen and now they're stuck. Monohole ground, monohole ground, monohole ground. Do you copy? Come on, turn your radio on. Monohole ground, monohole ground. Do you copy? Yes, copy. We are in distress here. Understood. I'm going to put my dinghy in the water and I'm going to come to you. Um, it is low tide right now, so the best thing that we can do is to, I believe, pull your anchor and get it into some deep water. Keep on board that vessel. Captain Distress, please confirm how many people are on board. I believe I saw two people. Is that correct? Nine. Nine people. Holy shit. We really ought to be trying to get those people off. Is there anyone else with a dinghy uh, available to assist? The closest boat to the vessel in distress happened to be another charter boat from the same charter company. Being that they were closest, we wanted to get their assistance, but no one was awake or answering the radio. The winds right now are really bad and we don't really feel safe putting the dinghy in the water. Plus there's nine people on board. Um, we certainly could not fit nine people in our dinghy. We've tried hailing the anchorage to see if we can get someone else to come help and no one seems to be able to help right now. Guys, I don't know what why we draw the short card here, but we've got to go help these people in distress, and uh, it's not going to be easy. The vessel that is beached, his name is Pyro. Pyro. Pyro, Pyro, Pyro. This is sailing vessel Adventure Cruise. To your bow, we are lowering our dinghy into the water now. Copy. Appreciate it. Radio check, does anyone copy? We are back from our second rescue in two weeks. It is now, what, 5.30 in the morning. 
And all that happened in the period of an hour and a half. Yeah. I don't know what in the world we did to be put in this position, but one, I guess I'm, I'm thankful, I'm thankful. That we were. And, and the issue that the last vessel had, we had that knowledge of, we've got to get their anchor out. We've got to get their anchor out. So the moment we were on our boat watching, we're like, they've got to get their anchor out. And so when we drove over on our dinghy, uh, I had the captain put the anchor in the dinghy. Uh, what we should have done was put all the road in the dinghy too, because as we were backing down, it was getting so heavy on me. I was actually afraid the anchor was kind of like in my lap because I didn't want it to puncture our dinghy. So I was trying to keep it off of that and I was afraid it was gonna uh, tighten up and pull me in. So we didn't get to get it out as, as far as possible, but I do think what we did was a positive because of that last experience and what we learned. We were able to get all nine passengers, captain and eight crew, onto the next boat over, which was actually a dream yacht catamaran as well. So uh, those people are obviously getting nice and friendly now. I will say, had the boat been taking on water, our first uh, method of action would have been to get everyone off, but we knew everyone was safe. We knew everyone had their life jackets on. The boat wasn't taking on water. So our thought process was spring into action to see if we can prevent them from going up on the rocks, which we did really quickly. Any and further, then, yeah. And then um, get everyone off. But goodness, if that was a situation uh, where they were taking on water, that would have been very difficult to try to cram everyone into our small dinghy and and take them somewhere else. And I was pumping water out of the dinghy as fast as I could with our um, manual, manual pump. pump and it just, uh, I found our new workout. We're gonna fill the dinghy with water and then we're gonna pump it out. And that is one heck of an arm workout, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Not every scary story with boating has a bad ending. In fact, as you can see behind me, this boat is now on its own anchor floating safe and sound. Some may call us crazy for taking this risk, but we think we'd be crazy not to. In the last year full-time cruising, we've traveled to many amazing places and got to meet many people and experience their way of life. These experiences, both the good and bad ones, have made us better. If there's anything we've learned along the way, life is fleeting and you gotta live life now.